the top headline for the hour, scholars stress utilizing digital media content creators to shape African narratives. Welcome to ABC World, the voice of Pan-Africanism. I'm Hikma Tamam with the news for the hour. Do stay with us. Nepir Prime Minister Tamas Gantoruna called on investors to capitalize on the favorable investment climate created by the macroeconomic policy reform, which the country has been fully implementing since recent time. Located near the port of Djibouti, the Dredawa Free Trade Zone provides investors with expedited and cost-effective services facilitating the importations of goods to the Ethiopian market, he emphasized. He added that the trade zone provides a one-stop center for government services and is instrumental in facilitating logistics and products distribution. As a key component of the Eastern Economic Corridor, it is also expected to create significant job opportunities, highlighting the zone's potential. The Deputy Prime Minister emphasized its modern infrastructure and facilities are designed to meet the needs of both investors and employees. Dredawa Mayor Kader Johar echoed the Deputy Prime Minister's sentiments, emphasizing the zone's role in stimulating local economic activity and job creation. Indian Ambassador to Ethiopia Anil Kumar Rai has highlighted the significant demand for Ethiopian agricultural products, including coffee, pulses, and oil seeds in India. He urged both the Ethiopian government and the business sector to seize the market opportunities. During his remarks, Ambassador Rai emphasized the shared interests between Ethiopia and India that could enhance their bilateral trade relations, noting that the BRICS Plus platform serves as a significant catalyst for deeper economic collaboration. While acknowledging the impressive growth of bilateral trade between the two nations, he stressed the importance of coordinated efforts to achieve a more balanced trade relationship. A recent collaborative study by the Indian Embassy and Ethiopia's Minister of Agriculture has outlined strategic recommendations aimed at boosting agricultural exports from Ethiopia. In an exclusive interview with FANA Broadcasting Corporate, Ambassador Ray praised the Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed's leadership, which has believes has played a critical role in implementing macroeconomic reforms that foster a favorable environment for investment and economic growth. The 46th meeting of the least developed countries export group is currently being held in Addis Ababa from August 19 to 22. During the meeting, it was highlighted that the Ethiopia's Green Legacy Initiative is marking and making a significant contribution to the global efforts to combat climate change. Participants are also reviewing progress on the implementation of the 2024 to 2025 work program aligned with the objectives set out by the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Change. Representatives from least developed countries alongside organizations such as the Adaptation Fund Board Secretariat, the Green Legacy Climate Fund Secretariat, the Global Environment Facility and its associated agencies as well as regional centers and networkers are engaging in discussions aimed at enhancing support for LDCs. A key focus of the meeting also includes the importance of integrating gender perspectives into the initiatives and operations of the LEG. Ashenda is held every year after the end of Bosita, a two-week fasting period that commemorates the ascension of the Virgin Mary. The festival lasts from three days to one month, depending on the location and tradition. Ashenda is a way of expressing gratitude, joy, and solidarity. Okay, so um, the celebration is called Ashenda, and it's basically the celebration of young women and girls. So we just finished our fasting for uh, Mary and so um, once the fasting is over we celebrate the young women the young girls um, normally we celebrate back home they'll go like 
we like we are we, 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 what we've been doing now and um, what we've been going around dancing clapping um, and then the men will like give us money <laughs> in its religious significance Ashenda is linked to Christianity specifically the ascension of the Virgin Mary at the end of the two week long falsetta fast Virgin Tigrayan girls adorn themselves in stunning white attire, gami hairstyle, and vibrant jewelries. We're back from a short break. Shaping the wrong narration in connection with Africa, well-organized efforts are needed to create content by activating digital media in the near future. Approached by ABC World, a Brigham University professor and also co-founder of African Women in Media, Yemisi Akimbobola, stressed that with regard to portrayal of Africa, utilizing digital media content creators can also help shape African narratives. The Gusarnisa has the following report. Africa in general is suffering from negative stereotypical news coverage and most stories center on conflicts or wars, poverty, slums, corruption, famine, droughts, floods, kidnapping, irregular migration, and xenophobia, among others. Talking to ABC World at Birmingham University professor and also co-founder of African Women in Media, Dr. Yemisi Akimbobola, stressed that with regard to portrayal of Africa by multiple media houses, victimhood representation should be dealt with. I'm tired of seeing of kind of African people, African women, African men not being able to look after themselves or have the agency to speak up, up for themselves and that victimhood representation needs to, needs to be tackled. And I think we're, there's a lot of organizations who are working hard to tackle that. Um, you have organizations like Africa No Filter, which is all about changing the narrative, and that's obviously an African Union um, um, kind of um, agenda as well, about changing the narrative of Africa. Um, so we've got to balance that. Akimbo Bola further disclosed that some issues could be blown out of proportion when it shouldn't be. The, uh, with the coverage of monkeypox, right, that we're seeing in the global media right now, um, whereas this monkeypox has been happening for quite a while in DRC and you know um, neighboring countries, and actually suddenly all of, all of a sudden you have one case in the UK and it becomes international news, <laughs> right? So there is a need. There is one aspect where we're reporting realities that we do not necessarily want the world to overly emphasize because it portrays badly. But there's a need for us to actually shed light on it earlier on so that they can be tackled. The, uh, I was watching the BBC this morning and they were interviewing a professor and talking about, okay, when, it, when are the pharmaceutical companies going to take this seriously? And the, 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 the respondent said, well, the numbers are still very low. She also went on saying that utilizing digital media content creators can also help shape African narratives. The idea of a Pan-African news organization is, is something that has been explored several times, right? And we have the digital space where there's a lot of players who are based in Africa and reporting African stories, right? Um, you have um, a lot of, we have our own news agencies. So I would suggest that some of these things are already there, right? So the question now is, why is, to, what has been the impact of them being there over the last you know, few decades, right? Um, I think in the West, there is a more conscious understanding of these imbalances, but nevertheless, um, it's not enough yet. And I think, like I said, that there are already media organizations um, who are reporting the continent and, and trying to change that narrative. Um, I think when you look at trust of the media, um, there's research that's shown that actually audiences tend to turn to social media a lot more and uh, social media influences a lot more. Content creators that would necessarily, uh, wouldn't necessarily interpret as um, legitimate journalism, right? But audiences are going to them way more compared to the CNNs and the BBCs and all that. 
So actually, beyond what you said, I think there's a need for us to work with those content creators also. In Africa, we have these, but we prefer these. We have these. A festival that celebrates women and young girls. This year, I was given a chance to take part in the celebration. Moving on to the final news, to try us a strategic partnership with Africa, particularly through its ambitious Belt and Road Initiative is generating significant impact on the continent's development trajectory. The BRI, a massive infrastructure investment program, is not only building roads, railways and ports across Africa, but also fostering regional integration and propelling economic growth in key sectors. With a focus on connecting countries through physical and digital infrastructure, the BRI is creating new opportunities for trade, investment and technological advancements, promising a brighter future for Africa's development. The BRI is an ambitious plan to develop two new trade routes connecting China with the rest of the world. But the initiative is about far more than infrastructure. It is an effort to develop an expanded interdependent market for China, grow China's economic and political power, and create the right conditions for China to build a high technology economy. And now before I go, a recap of the top story once again. Scholars stress utilizing digital media content creators to shape African narratives. For now, you have been watching ABC World, the voice of Pan-Africanism. I was Hikma Tamam with the news for the hour. Have a good time.